Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses, which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course, which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our class today, where we are continuing with uh, chapter three of the research proposal. And we said that chapter three of the research proposal is titled research methodology. So today we are going to look at two sections and the two sections are section 3.6 and section 3.7. In our previous lesson, we have discussed section 3.5, which is sample size and sampling procedures or sampling techniques. We have said that a sample is drawn from accessible target population. And once we determine the sample size based on the theories that we discussed, then you now as a researcher identify the technique or the procedure that you are going to use to draw that sample from the population. And that is the sample that you will use in your study. This lesson will discuss instruments and will also discuss data collection procedures. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate between data collection method and data collection instruments. You should also be able to identify the four main methods of data collection. Identify the instruments that are used with the methods in outcome two above and then as a researcher explain the requirements of section 3.6 and 3.7. Please note we discussed methods of data collection and instruments in detail from lesson 38 to 45. So remember in these lessons that we are now talking about the research proposal we shall not go into details. We are explaining what you are expected to have in your proposal but the details had earlier been discussed in lesson 38 to 45. So we have 10 subsections in chapter 3. So far we have discussed paradigm, design, target population, sample size and sampling techniques. So today we are discussing subsection 3.6 instruments and 3.7 which is the data collection procedure. Data collection is one of the extremely important part of research because the final result of a research study is dependent on the data that you collect. If you collect data that is not of quality then it means that even your findings, your conclusions and your recommendations will be flawed. Data collection is that process of gathering, measuring, and analyzing accurate, and please note the meaning of the word accurate, data from a variety of relevant sources to find answers to research uh, problem, answer the research questions, and also test hypothesis. Meaning that data collection does not end at a point where you just collect data from your respondents. It goes further by explaining how you measure and that we discussed in lesson five and also other data collection instruments. And once you have measured, then how do you analyze that data? And it is not just any data. It must be accurate because it must be geared towards answering the research problem, helping you to answer the research questions and also help you to test hypothesis. When you're thinking about this whole process called data collection, there are four factors that are very key. 
The first one is the kind of data that you wish to collect. Do you wish to collect numerical data or do you wish to collect narrative data or a combination of both? The other one is the method or methods of data collection that you are going to use. And we mainly have four methods that we shall discuss in our next slide. The other one is the type of data that you want to collect. Will it be categorical or will it be continuous? That means, has it been measured at nominal and ordinal or has it been measured at interval and ratio? And that we discussed in lesson 5 and also lesson 38. And then the finally is the scoring of the data to enable analysis. And this is key, especially for quantitative analysis. And it is because the method of data analysis that we are going to discuss in the next section is dependent on the type of data that you collect. So we have four main methods of data collection. The four are administration of questionnaires, observation, interviews and document analysis now they have not been uh, uh, ordered they are just the four that we have mentioned now when you talk about a method you talk about a way of doing something is the procedure but the instrument or the tool is the device that is used with that procedure so when you come to research proposal, do you write data collection methods or data collection instruments? Please note that we write data collection instruments. We discuss instruments and those instruments must have coherence with the method. So from the four methods of data collection, we have this table that helps us to identify the instruments. Administration of a questionnaire as a method uses the tool questionnaire. And most of the time, questionnaire is used in quantitative research. So it's a quantitative measure. And it is because sometimes when you use a questionnaire, you, are, you do not probe. But if you have questions where you will probe your respondents, let's assume the open-ended questions that you will probe your respondents, then it may collect both quantity and quality. And please note the word probing. As long as there is no probing, even the open-ended questions will be collecting numerical data because you will tally the responses and then calculate the percentages or any other statistical uh, uh, tool that you may want to use to summarize your data. The other method is observation. So from observation, we have two instruments. We have observation guide, which is a qualitative instrument and observation schedule, which is a quantitative instrument. So one of them is structured, the other one is unstructured. So the guide is unstructured while the schedule is uh, structured. Number three is interview. Now interview may be one-on-one -on -one or group interview, which we call focus group discussion. So at the interview, we have three main tools. We have interview guide, which is a qualitative instrument. We have focus group discussion guide, which is a qualitative instrument and interview schedule, which is a quantitative measure or a quantitative instrument. Now in, when you talk about an interview schedule is actually a questionnaire administered orally without probing. And then finally we have document analysis and the instrument or the tool is called document analysis guide which is a qualitative measure or it helps to collect qualitative data. So in this section 3.6, remember we have said we do not discuss data collection methods, we discuss instrument. So this is the section where you as the researcher, you discuss in details the instruments that you will use in the study. This means how will the tool be structured? Whom is it developed for? 
and what kind of information will the tool be eliciting so you talk about the structure in terms of it will have seven subsection and this tool is meant for x and y and it will be collecting the following type of information you should also explain why the tool or the tools are deemed to be suitable for your study why will you use a document analysis guide and not focus group discussion guide or why will you use a combination of interview guide and a questionnaire so you need to tell the reader why out of the many instruments you have selected two or three the researcher should be keen on triangulation. This is the use of more than one method of data collection. However, the level of uh, 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 your academic level as a researcher may dictate whether you will use more than one or you'll just use one. For instance, at undergraduate levels, the issues of triangulation may not really be key, but as you move towards the graduate level, then this must be taken into consideration, meaning that the researcher must use more than one instrument so that they can triangulate. The choice of the instrument to use is dependent on the research paradigm and the research design. And the table that we have uh, discussed in slide 7 differentiates between the instruments that you use for a quantitative research and the tools that you use for qualitative study. So you can see the coherence that the paradigm informs the design, the design informs the sample size and the sampling uh, procedure and this again now informs the instruments that you are going to use. Now once you have constructed the instrument, before now you take them to your real sample, it is important to determine whether they will elicit the kind of information that you require. This you do by pilot testing the instruments. Then once you have revised your instrument as after the pilot, then you need to ensure that your instruments will give you data that is both valid and reliable, which we discussed in lesson 21 to 27, and do not go to the field until you have obtained authorization to conduct that research. That is one of the ethical issues that we are going to discuss. So when you are piloting, which is a subsection of section 3.6, you evaluate the efficacy of the instrument, your sampling strategies, and the methods of data collection. So when you are piloting, you identify a sample that is not part of the main study, but it has similar characteristics with your main study. This enables you to identify any uh, failures that you may encounter when you get to the real research study. It also helps you to determine whether the questions of research are clear to your respondents and that they are responding appropriately and that the data you collect, you will be able to analyze it. Piloting establishes whether the sampling frame and the techniques are suitable. You are able to identify any logistical problems that which might occur during the research study. You are able to identify the resources that you require as well as developing a research plan. After piloting, then determine validity. And as we did this in le from lesson 21, we said piloting does not determine validity and reliability. Piloting enhances validity and reliability. So there are clear methods of determining validity and there are clear methods of determining reliability. And we always start with validity, which means appropriateness or usefulness of the research in inferences before we determine the reliability. It is the responsibility of the researcher to explain how validity of both quantitative and qualitative uh, instruments will be determined in the research study. Please note in lesson 21, 22 and 26, we discussed how you determine validity of both quantity and qualitative instruments. So once you have established uh, validity, the next step is to determine reliability. So you can see the three are subsections of 3.6, but again, based on your discipline and the university, there are some that would treat them as distinct. 
So whereas validity deals with usefulness, reliability deals with consistency. So you are asking yourself, will the instrument yield data that is consistent? Again, we discuss reliability in details in lesson 23, 24, 25, and 27. So in that section, explain the methods that you are going to employ to ensure that you will collect data that is reliable. Again, it is your responsibility to explain how reliability of quantitative and qualitative instrument will be determined. So once you have uh, uh, identified methods of determining uh, uh, validity and reliability, the next section is 3.7, which is data collection procedure. This is where the researcher explains all the steps that they are going to follow when they go to the field to collect data. Some of them will be application of authorization of all permit, visiting the site before the actual study so that you can create a rapport with your respondents and also familiarize yourself with the area. If you have any research assistants, then you need to explain when and how you will train them and also how you want to administer or how you will administer the instrument. And that brings us to the end of our lesson. In this lesson, we have discussed section 3.6 and 3.7 of chapter 3 of the research proposal. 3.6 is titled Data Collection Instruments and under that, once you have described the instrument, you need to ensure that you pilot them, then you ensure they will give you data that is valid and reliable. Section 3.7 describes the procedure that you use or you will follow when you are collecting data. Our next section will be dealing with section 3.8 which is on analysis. Thank you for being part of this class. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel and please share this video and like and comment by asking any question that regards this lesson on the comment section.